Well, amen. <laughs> Good to be saved. I tell you, a lot of things changed. A lot of water under the bridge and down through the years. I'm in D, brother. But uh, I tell you one thing that stayed the same, brother. If you get saved and, and you get washed in the blood and you go to heaven, it'll be through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That'd be the only way.
Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody else. Turn down just a little bit, brother. Amen. That's a good testimony. Amen. Amen. That's a good testimony. That's a good testimony. If your husband ever has you put in jail, say it's still the blood. <laughs> That's a good testimony right there. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Lordy mercy. Lord always does that. We have this glory bowl here on this first Sunday evening in February. I think he pours out a special blessing. Isn't that sad that we live in a country like this? It's sad that we live in a country where Christians, I ain't gonna, get, I ain't gonna say it. It just, go ahead. No, you're right, bro. Yeah. Come on. Yep. Right. Right. Hey, hey, man. Yeah, me too. Yep, man. Yep. Hey, man. Yep, man, brother. That's right. Yep. Yes, it does. Yes, sir. Yep, man. Preach. Yep, man, brother. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, sir, brother. God help. Yep. Yep, yep. Amen, brother. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. Yep, ma'am. Hallelujah. Yep, ma'am, brother. Amen, brother. Yep, ma'am. Yep, ma'am. Hallelujah. Yep, ma'am. Right. Yep, ma'am. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Amen, brother. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Amen. Amen, brother. That's right. Me too. Me too. Me too. Amen. Me too, brother. Me too. That's right. Yes, sir. That's right, brother. Amen. Amen, brother. That's right. Amen. You're all right, brother. I agree. I'm the same way. Amen. sister. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Amen. Isn't that good? Bless your heart. That's what I preached on this morning. What does it really matter? Does it matter? You know what? We spend our life, halftime on stuff that don't even matter. And it ain't going to matter when eternity's here. And he said, he's right, Jason said, in my flesh, you know what it said? Dwelleth what? No good thing. No good thing. And the, the biggest deception you can have about you is to think you're something special or good or you know, 
because you're not. All right, let's take a Bible look in the First Timothy chapter four. Just a few minutes tonight. Very uh, briefly here. This scene. Don't look here. Uh, uh, here in First Timothy chapter four, as ice on the ground, as ice, the trees are bending over, and half people's got the flu, and it's oh awful weather. I, I I don't like this time of weather, this kind of weather. But we, we need it. God sent it to us. We'll take it, and um, hope for a better week next week. Uh, this is only the second time this. Winter, we did not get to run the buses, and the phone was ringing over here this morning, bus kids calling, wondering where the buses was. I'm telling you, that's a blessing, isn't it? Ten-year-olds calling, saying, where's the bus? Where's the bus? And I, I thought, that's a blessing. That's great. Uh, Lord willing, we'll hit it twice as hard next week, bus workers. Amen? Uh, twice as hard next week. All right, First Timothy chapter 4, uh, the Apostle Paul under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, wrote to Timothy, verse 11. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation. We've preached on all that in charity and spirit and faith and purity. Now look at verse 13. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Three things, reading, exhortation, and doctrine. He said, Timothy, till I come, till I get there, here's what I want you to do. Now, you understand verses in the Bible, we understand that that's Paul to Timothy, but we also understand it's the Lord to us. That's the way you read the Bible. Every verse in the Bible has a literal meaning, a a historical, spiritual, and doctrinal uh, application. Doctrinal... uh, uh, Scripturally, spiritually tonight, that's the Lord saying to us, till I come, give attendance to reading, exhortation, and doctrine. So I want to preach tonight on reading. And I know it's early still in the year, and we've been reading our Bible, and everybody's reading the Bible, I trust, and I'm going to talk about tonight how to read the Bible. Really, just a practical little exhortation message on how to read your Bible. Uh, Brother Jason was saying something about we need to seek God and we need to worship God, and that's true. You need to worship the Lord. You know why? The Lord will, will show up when you worship Him. When you worship Him. When them hands go up. When them shouts go up. It breaks the, the, the demonic powers of hell. And the devil can't stand that. The devil can't stand a happy church. The devil can't stand a praising, worshiping church. The devil can't stand a Bible preaching church. He can't stand it. He can't go around. You know, you start playing. That's why I talk about music so much. You play the right kind of music, the devil leaves. You play the wrong kind of music, the devil comes in. There's been a many a girl done the wrong thing because she listened to the wrong music and the wrong spirit got it. There's been a many a boy dropped his moral standard because of the music. And I ain't going to preach on music tonight because some nut wrote me a letter the other day uh, saying I was uh, trying to trick people because we had an invitation song. He said, don't the Holy Spirit tell the Holy Spirit enough? And he's just dumb. He's just dumb. I mean, the Holy Spirit is enough. He's God, uh, the third person of Godhead. But to say the Holy Spirit don't use music to speak to people's heart is, is a very ignorant thing to say. And so tonight, I want to talk about reading the Bible. And I want to give you six things about how to read your Bible. Number one, we'll get right into this tonight. Uh, uh, it takes 70 hours. This is not my point. I want an introduction. It takes 70 hours and 40 minutes to read the entire Bible. It takes uh, you three weeks on the time you spend on your phone. You could read the entire Bible. Bible. It only takes 18 hours to read the entire New Testament. 18 hours and a, and a quarter hour. Number one, read it through regularly. Read it through regularly. I've always heard this, and believe, but I'm, I've never believed this more than I believe it now. Every year when I start all over in Genesis and I read the New Testament three times, I, I, I say, now I'm going to go through it this time and I'm going to read it. Now, why why, why do we say read the whole thing through over and over? Because things open up. Because uh, there's power in the Word of God. And the Bible said, then he opened their 
uh, hearts that they could understand the Scripture. Uh, you, might, you might read something this year and last year and the year before, and it mean nothing to you. And then all of a sudden, one day you read it, and bam, there it is. There's why you read it over and over and over and over again. Just come through it and come through it and come through it and come through it. Old George Mueller read the Bible through one hundred times. And they said most of the time on his knees. And George Miller said, he said, I delight in it. He said, every time I read it, I love it more and more and more. It means more to me every time I go through there. And you know what I do? There's a lot of stuff in the Bible I don't understand. And every time, every year when I start, I think maybe this will be the year that God lets me see that scripture, where that fits, or how this doctrine works, or 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 how that uh, applica- where, you, where do you apply here and there. And there's just so much you get by reading it over and over and over. By the way, when you read your Bible, it's going into your heart and your mind. And that's why when you're in a time at work or something, it comes back to you. The Holy Spirit brings it back to your remembrance. He can't bring something back to your remembrance that you never did know. That's why you're supposed to read it. How many times you've been talking to somebody at work and all of a sudden scripture come out? Scripture come out. You say, that's what Brother Brother Danny preached on. That's what Brother Derek taught on. Or I heard that and, and I heard a preacher on the radio or I read it myself and it comes back. It comes back. Now that's supernatural and the Holy Spirit will bring Back to your remembrance, the scripture that you've read. That's why you read it. It's going to be in you. How can he bring it back if you never read it? Amen? I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, that is the book of all books. Hey, I talked to this guy that's been a long time ago, a, a psychiatrist of Harvard University. Brilliant man, brilliant man. And he said this. He studied human nature and human behavior, as he called it. Me and you call it human nature. Uh, it's a, that's a, a biblical uh, way to, to look at it, is our nature. But he called it human behavior. And he said, all that I've ever learned about human behavior is taught in the Old and New Testaments. He said every behavior like pride and jealousy and, and revenge and hate and murder and love, and it's all in the Bible. That means you can get a, a education on human nature by reading this book that you can't get any other way in this world. How many times have you read the story of David and saw human nature at work? Lust and vengeance and murder. And uh, How many times have you read the story of Samson and saw strength and, and all those stories of the wars in the Bible and hatred and, and Jesus and the disciples and Peter and the denial? I'm telling you tonight, people, read that thing through regularly. Don't let the devil cheat you out of reading your Bible. Make yourself read it. Take time to read it. You say, well, here it is, February, Brother Danny, and I've already given up. Start all over tonight. Get back in there. Read that thing. Read that thing. Read it regularly. Read it regularly. Read it regularly. It'll stick in your soul. Number two, read your Bible with prayer. Read your Bible with prayer. You don't just read the Bible like it's a newspaper. You read the Bible every day, every day. I did this morning, do it every morning. When I start reading my chapters, I was in, uh, I was in John chapter one this morning, uh, John one and two, and I said, Lord, speak to me through this chapter in Jesus' name, amen. And then I read that chapter. Before I read the next chapter, I say, Lord, speak to me through this chapter in Jesus' name. I do that before I read the Bible every day. I, I believe, I believe in that. I believe the Lord supernaturally takes that book and works in our heart, and so read the Bible with prayer. With prayer. Ask for light. Sometime before you read the Bible, say, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the Bible today. Lord, help me to look at it right. Help me to be in the right spirit. You do remember it's a two-edged sword. And some of the craziest nuts ever been in this world got their ideas out of the Bible, but they got it in the wrong spirit and they wasn't led right. Uh, communism and everything else. Uh, they, 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 they get all that junk because they don't get the Bible. When I read the Bible, I want to look at it in the right spirit. I want to be led by the right spirit. I want to be taught by the right spirit. And so you read the Bible with prayer. Sometimes you stop and pray. Sometimes uh, you'll read a scripture to say, I, I just can't get that. And you'll stop and say, Lord, 
if, if it could be your will, would you show me what this scripture needs to say to me? To, and you look at it again, you still can't get it. And you say, Lord, I sure, and you maybe run some references, and you look at it and you still can't. Now, this is important. What I'm going to say right now is important. I have met a lot of people that they'll start reading, and they'll come up with something they can't understand, and they just go off on this big, huge study looking up Greek and Hebrew words and definition and meanings and this and that, Hebrew, trying to cause a stumped on that one verse and they call every preacher in the world and, and spend the rest of the month on that one verse. You Listen, it's God don't want, you can't understand it all the first time or the second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time or the fiftieth time you can't understand it all. When you run into a verse you can't understand, you say, Lord, help me. God, help me to get this. I sure would like to know what this And if you can't, just keep reading and go on. Maybe you get it next time. Uh, you can't get hungry. Did you know if you totally exhausted every verse, you'd never get through the first chapter of Genesis? I mean, brother, there's so much in Genesis 1 and for you to study the rest of your life. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. There's about 10 years worth of study. Right there, brother, the universe and the Saturn and Neptune and Pluto and, and gravity and air and light and you human beings. I mean, you'd never get through it all. That's why I say just read it through Read it with prayer. If you get hung up on something, just jump on over the fence and keep on going and read the Word of God. Read it with prayer. Number three, read it with meditation. Read it with meditation. David said in that word, I meditate day and night. What does meditate mean? Think, to ponder. How many of you ever read the book of Psalms and you'll be reading Psalms and down at the end it'll say, Selah. That little word, selah, that's, they, say, they tell us that's exactly what that word means. It means stop and think about what you just read. Like I read over in Psalms the other day, I will look under the hills from whence cometh my help, selah. My, my, think of all the times that I've looked to the hills and God's helped me. Think of all the times when he made a way, when there wasn't no way, and I, and I got my bills paid, and my kids did get through school, and they did make it through, and they all did get saved. Brother, we ain't come through with flying colors, but by the grace of God, we've come through. Hallelujah, praise his holy name. I'm telling you, meditate on God's word day and night, Think about it, think about it, think about it. Think of different angles. Think of different uh, doctrinal. Think of it literally. Think of it spiritually. Think of it doctrinally. Think of it historically. Meditate, meditate. Sometimes you just read, 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 read. And sometimes you'll stop and just take a word and meditate on that word day and night. I'm glad to say tonight, when you read your Bible, meditate on it. I had this guy one time, uh, he was going somewhere and he had this little bitty suitcase and the guy said, man, what are you doing? He said, I'm packing. I'm going on a long trip. So I got to get my stuff packed. He said, what all you got to get in there? He said, uh, he said I'm taking a, uh, a lamp uh, where I'm going. I'm taking a mirror. I'm taking a telescope. I'm taking a map. I'm taking some biographies and some poetry. I'm taking a sword. I'm taking food too, milk and bread and meat and water. I'm taking a compass. And that man said, you're never going to get all that in that little suitcase. And he pulled up behind and he said, oh yeah, I will. There it is. There's a map. There's a compass. There's a mirror. There's meat. There's light to my feet. Lamp on my feet, light to my path. There's meat. There's bread. There's milk. There's honey. I'm uh, telling you something, brother. There's a ruler that you can judge everything by. Uh, there's a telescope where you can see the future. I'm telling you, brother, we've got a wealth. We've got a wealth. We've got a Bible. Thank God for the King James Bible. I love it more tonight, I believe, than I have in many, many, many years. All that study I've done back yonder a few months, weeks ago, preaching on Baptists and their Bible, has made me appreciate my Bible that Brother William Tyndale and them guys uh, wrote, in, uh, translated into English, and then King James gave the authority, and in 1611, the greatest book that's ever been in the history of God's earth came out, and we still have a copy of it today. We ought to just, just grab it once in a while and say, I love my Bible. Now, if you're sinning and listening to bad music, you won't like that Bible because they don't go together. And you can say whatever you want to say. You can argue to your blue in the face, try to justify movies with wickedness in them and nakedness in them. It takes your desire for that Bible away. 
And the Bible takes away your desire for that. You'll quit that or you'll quit them. Say amen, folks. I'm telling you, you cannot live sinfully and keep reading that Bible. It'll blow the sin right out of you. Read it with meditation. Number four, read it with reference to yourself. Read it with reference to yourself. That's very important. Don't read the Bible hunting something to straighten out brother so-and-so. How many of you don't raise your hand? I guess we've all, I'll find me a verse, bless God, and I'll straighten her out. I mean, that ain't the way to read the Bible. That really is not. I, you know, when I come to the Bible, I'm supposed to say, all right, Lord, like he said, I'm a no good sinner. I ain't worth shooting. And if I got what I deserved, I'd be in hell right now. And if you'd have mercy on me and speak to me through this, I'd sure appreciate it. It's not my brother or my sister. It ain't my job to find out a verse to straighten out. Any verse could straighten him out. <laughs> or, or, or him. Or him. Or, I mean, it's not your job to go hunting through the Bible to find a verse to back up what you want to hit somebody over the head with. Say amen right there. We read it with reference to ourself. We receive a blessing and then go be a blessing. I received a blessing last night studying this. It's so hard to study on a night like last night. There's a 100% chance of ice. And I had a, big, a long, big thing I'd been studying. And I was going to preach this morning. I thought, now, Lord, if, if there's just a few people there, do you want me to? I don't know, Lord. And the Lord says, a few is just as important as many. Uh, Ten people is as important as 10,000. Uh, Jesus preached some of his sermons. Uh, Jesus didn't say, there ain't one here today, the one at 12. I'm going to save this one. He didn't do that, did he? He, he went ahead and, and gave Nicodemus and her. And, uh, and uh, I, I, I did not preach what I planned early. I thought maybe the Lord wanted me to do something else and uh, to, to save that, and I don't know. But I, I tell you one thing, brother. Uh, I, I, I said I received a blessing, so now I want to be a blessing. I received help, now I'm going to be a I got help last night from this, now I'm wanting to help you with it. That's why you read the Bible. Read the Bible to get help yourself. I can't help you if I ain't getting some kind of help. I can't be a blessing. I can't feed you if I ain't getting fed. I can't set the table at shining light so you can come and feast off the Word of God if I'm not in my closet getting something from the Word of God. Listen, you can tell when a preacher don't study, can't you? And you don't want to be judgmental or anything, but bless their heart, I've heard some preachers, and, and whew, Lord have mercy, 15 minutes, and you, know, they didn't, you don't even know what they said. And it's, and uh, brother, and then uh, brother, and, uh, and brother, and you think, I, and you, I mean, I, I don't mean to be ugly, but I mean, brother, when a man gets something from God, he gets in the prayer closet, and he gets it out of that book, and buddy, he puts it out there, there's a big difference in that. And that's what my job is. I get help, and then I give you help. I get instruction, then I give you instruction. I say, Lord, if you're speaking to me, matter of fact, the best preaching you'll ever do is when you aim at yourself. You aim at yourself, you'll hit everybody else because y'all are made out of the same stuff I'm made out of. Amen? We're all the same whole, brother. Old Will Rogers said this. Old Will Rogers had all that old conventional wisdom years ago, and he said, you know what America needs? He said, America needs cleaner minds and dirtier fingernails. And you know what he meant? He said, we need to go back to work with our hands and learn how to work with our hands, get our hands dirty and get our minds clean instead of being all clean little sissy boys uh, with a dirty heart and a dirty mind. Say amen right there. Lord, we're raising up a generation of boys that ain't never had their hands in grease in a car motor, ain't never laid down underneath a car and got, uh, you know, had a ranch, hit them in the mouth and, and bloody their, their jaw. Or they ain't never fell through a, a, an old a piece of rotten plywood and down into the basement. They ain't never, they ain't never wrecked a bicycle and blooded both their knees and all they do is sit around on the couch. Lord, I seen one the other day. Oh my Lord. I knocked on a door and the door opened and this guy, I, man, man, he about looked like he's 40 something years old. He had a little shorts about it to here and he said, oh, thank you. I went, oh, Lord, have mercy. That's a, that's a day we're living in. We're living in a sissy generation. You know what the Bible will do? It'll give you clean mind. Clean mind. You won't have wicked, dirty thoughts about every woman that walks by or man if you'll spend enough time in that book. You say, Brother Danny, I can't have it. I understand. You're flat. I got it. I say, I know we're living in a wicked world. But I'm telling you, the only way you're going to have victory is let this clean your mind. The renewing of your mind. 
Number five. By the way, by the way, I said this morning, I'll repeat it tonight. This is, an, oh, this is a saying, I, it's not in the Bible, but I have no reason to doubt it. A person who is slack in their Bible reading is also slack in other areas of their life somewhere. I can't prove that, but I have no reason to doubt it. I don't have any reason to doubt that. A person who is slack in their Bible reading will be slack on something else over here somewhere, some kind of sin. Number five, read it with faith. Read it with faith. The Bible don't do you no good if you don't believe it. The Bible said, effectually worketh in them that believe. The believe. That's why, I, that's why you hear these, these atheists and stuff get out there and say, well, I've read the Bible, I've read the Bible. But they, they didn't believe it. It don't do you no good if you don't believe it. It only works in people who believe it. Amen? It works in the way. Every word, every word, every word in the Bible is not to me. But every word in the Bible is for me. God didn't say everything. I've heard people say, everything in there God said right to me. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. That's why we don't offer animal sacrifices. That's why we don't go to the temple, a Jewish temple on, Sunday, on Saturday morning. God didn't say everything in there to us. He said everything in there for us, for our learning, for our exhortation, for our, our comfort, for doctrine. And I gotta, I gotta, my job is to read this thing and rightly divide it. You've heard me say this over and over and over. The Lord gave me this years ago. I'd never heard nobody say it. The Lord gave it to me. And I said the Bible is like, is like this big old bucket of marbles. And you got blue, you got yellow, you got red, and you got, let's just say, uh, uh, green. Blue, red, yellow, green, whatever. And our job is to do this. Where He said, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing. So when I come to a verse in the Bible, it's yellow, I put it here. I come to a part in the Bible, it's green, I put it here. I come to the verse in the Bible's here, I put it here. And when I get through, I have a nice little green pile, a nice little yellow pile, red pile, and blue pile. I have rightly divided it. There are verses in the Bible that are strictly to Gentiles. That would go in one. There are verses in the Bible that are strictly Jewish. There are verses in the Bible that are totally to the church. There are verses in the Bible that are totally during the Great Tribulation. There are verses in the Bible. And our job is to rightly divide it and it don't. If you don't look at it with that approach, you're just going to have a big mess of contradiction or you're going to have to spiritualize it all uh, to keep from contradicting itself. That's the only way it makes sense. Listen, I've looked at this thing every way you can look at it. I've studied all the angles. I ain't a genius, but I, I ain't stupid neither. And I've looked at it every way you can look at it. And the only way you can keep the Bible from contradicting itself is rightly divided. That's why somebody said, well, see, there the Bible says you're not supposed to eat certain kinds of meat. And there the Bible says you can eat anything. See, there's a contradiction no there's not a contradiction that was Old Testament Jews under the law Jesus died on the cross took the ceremonial law such as eating and eating certain kind of meat nailed it to the cross and on this side of Calvary he said you can eat anything you want as long as you ask the blessing on it see what I mean about rightly dividing you know, we get criticized that. People say, oh, you're chopping the Bible up. The Lord chopped it up. The Lord did. Uh, he, he had Old Testament and New Testament. That's chopping it in half. I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, he said study. By the way, your King James Bible is the only Bible on the market that has that word study in it. That's something to think about. That's something for all you people who justify the new version. Now think about, ladies and gentlemen, you better remember that old book right there has the word study to show thyself approved unto God rightly dividing the word of truth. That's why I said to one people, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And remember another verse, one man esteemeth ever, one day alike, one man esteemeth every day different. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. There's one day no different than the other day. Something happened between them two verses. Jesus died on the cross and he took the Sabbath day and nailed it to the cross. Ladies and gentlemen, study the Bible with faith, believe in every word. And if you can't get it this time, get it next time. And if you can't get it the next time, get it the next time. And you'll never get it all. 
Nobody's got it all figured out. Last, and I'm through. Read the Bible with the intent of practicing what you read. What's the Bible say? Not just be hearers of the word, but help me, doers of the word. Amen. As obedient children, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we are to be doers of the word of God. I remember one time, I, I, I seen that and I, I ain't been saved just a few months. I'll never forget. I was up in my old fort and I was in a restaurant up there. I was working up there or something. And I said, all right, I'm going to do everything in the Bible. It said be do it. Everything I'm going to see, I'm going to read it and do it. And I got over in Proverbs and it said, go to the ant, thou sluggard. I went out and found me an ant. And I watched that thing crawl over the yard and everything. And I, and I thought, good night, man. If I start doing everything it says in here, they ain't enough hours in the day. They ain't enough hours in a day. But that right there will keep you busy. Living for God. People say, well, I'm bored. Uh, I, I don't know. There's something wrong with a Christian. Uh, uh, there's something wrong with a Christian. Uh, uh, you are never to be bored. I don't ever remember being bored since I've been saved except when I had to go to a Lamaze class or I had to watch golf or something. Uh, but I, that wasn't my choice. I, listen, I've always got books to read. I've always got prayers to pray. I've always got phone calls to make. I could go home right now and call 10 people that would love to hear from me and say, man, I just thought I'd call you and pray with you. See, you don't, you don't need to be bored. Get you a little ministry going. Get you a little ministry. Ladies, you can do that. You can just call. I, I thought about Miss Barbara. Bless her heart. Just lost her husband, and she's trying to hang in there. And what a blessing it'd be, ladies. Just be doers of the word. Comfort the widows. I mean, call her up and say, Miss Barbara, I've just been thinking about you. And I know, I mean, they was together a long time. And, and, and you know, when you're with somebody that long and all of a sudden they're gone. I mean, there's, and there's people in our church struggling. I mean, there's people in our church, you know, y'all, y'all know each other. You know, we struggle about different. I mean, don't just let your life be about you. Read that thing with the intention of doing what it says. Yeah. Honor God. Come to church. Pay your tithes, live right, serve God. Be doers of the word. That's how you read your Bible. Read your Bible. Uh, you ever noticed when you read your Bible and you run into something and you don't want to do it, you're stuck. You're stuck right there. You ain't going nowhere till you surrender and say, all right, Lord, all right, I'm willing to do it. That's how to read the Bible. All right, let's stand by our heads for prayer. Our heads are bowed tonight. Let's just get a song and sing a couple of verses up, brother can on this old cold February evening. Be a good time just to gather around here tonight and let's pray for the youth rally yes, sir. and let's pray that God will help his word to be more real to us this year than ever Praise before. She's playing softly. I'm going to pray. How many of you meet me here tonight and, and just say, Lord, thy word is very pure. Yes. Therefore, thy servant loveth it. Let's fall in love again with our Bible. Heavenly Father, I pray, oh God, in Jesus' name, Lord, that you'd help us to love your word, Lord. Help us to read the Bible every day. Help us to read it every day. And Lord, not just word, but in faith and with hunger and with desire, oh God. Have mercy on us, Lord, we pray. Do what ought to be done. Bless our church. Lord of God, hallelujah. Help us to live right and serve you every day. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray for his sake. Amen. 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 Let's sing. Search me, oh God. Help me. And oh my heart today. Try me, oh Savior. Wicked way Get rid of it. Me. Get rid of it, Lord. Cleanse me from oh, every Lord. sin and set me free. Say one more, brother. I praise the Lord Amen. for cleansing me from sin.
last one, bro. Go ahead. Be all right. I like this. Amen. Oh, Holy Ghost, Revive comes from thee. Comes from thee. Amen. Send a revival and start Mark, the right work here. in me. me. Right here in me. Amen. Thou Declares, Amen. Thou wilt supply our need. 